So here we have an explanation of, of workflow on merging files. So the idea here is that multiple parts, if a lot of people work on them independently, such as the Raspberry Pi that we're working on, we've got the Raspberry Pi, we've got a battery holder, we've got a case, we've got the screen and other parts, how do we work uh, them into the same document? So there's a procedure where we merge all these individual ones into a single doc which allows for a parallel workflow where a lot of people are working on individual parts and then we're putting them all together into a, sep into a complete document, the final assembly. So in order to prepare files, depending on how we generated them, they might have a lot of information and in they'll have the whole part tree where how one pad and one feature was added onto another, or maybe it has sketches underneath it. Um, so before you merge, prepare the files for merging. That means clean them up shrink them and make them easy to work with because otherwise a part that we've generated like for example the battery holder will have a whole number of items in a part tree the tree view of the individual steps that trace how you built the thing we don't need any of that we need the final product and we can we still have the original file saved up so what we do is save a simpler version and work from that so what are the three things we can do abc make compounds from multiple parts so that move rotate is easy so a certain file might have multiple parts if you if you want to rotate or move them which is part of our final assembly you got to definitely move and rotate things around uh, you want to be able to grab every, everything at once not like select one thing and forget to rotate other parts so one way to do that is make compounds from multiple parts this makes moving and rotating parts easy Number two is eliminate sketches and other artifacts to make dumb objects. So strip everything out of a file, which also, by the way, reduces memory size so that the files are quicker to work with. So the, then after you do that, basically strip all the excess information, make compound, copy, make copies into a new document in which you do not copy any of the underlying info. So there's different ways to do that save that file in a version history of that file where you got it from. So the version history will have the full detailed file, which is still editable, and then the, the simplified file or the dumbed down file, which may not be as editable uh, depending on how you generated it. So to do the merge workflow, it's simple. Go into File menu in, in FreeCAD, go to File, Merge. Uh, now Merge works only with FreeCAD files, so if you have other formats such as SDL files that you got from elsewhere, we can definitely work with them in FreeCAD and STEP files but just save them as FreeCAD files so that they will appear when you open up the file menu under for merge. Um, so then rotate and move things. That's the workflow you need to do. Assembly workbench is not necessarily needed here. So assembly is more complicated uh, workbench. There are different functions in there, but just simply moving and rotating is sufficient. So if you think of it intuitively, if you're a builder, if you're some non-tech savvy person who's really good with their hands, it's very intuitive to think about rotating and moving things. And that kind of workflow is very easy to learn. All you need to know is how to use the rotate tool and move tool, which when you use those tools in a draft workbench, just make sure that you select for the view, uh, go to a certain plane in which you're moving or rotating, and then make sure that the view is selected for that plane so that when you rotate something you're moving in a plane that's well defined. Now when you have the final product say we combine the the Raspberry Pi tablet into an assembly there's one more step you want to do to the version history of the individual files and that is saving them in the positionally correct individual order uh, individual part save the positionally correct part individual part meaning you t you highlight that part in the assembly and then click copy and then click paste into a new document and that saves the positional information so at that point you can save that new document and it will save that file that you then save into the version history of that particular part what that does is the next time you want to open up the whole file from parts, the merge workflow already puts them in in the correct position, so you don't have to mess with rotating and moving parts. So that way you can save a very large complex file by simply opening up a large number of individual parts. So why do we do that? Why do we do all of that? Because 
Now, large assemblies can be, so this is advantages of a merge workflow. Large assemblies can be worked on by unlimited numbers of people as opposed to a single master drafts person. So a lot of times CAD is done by a, the master drafts person and really it's a bottleneck, at least we, the way we've seen it before at OSC. Someone goes on SolidWorks, uh, we don't have SolidWorks, they work on it, they, they do it at their time. You can't help them because you don't have the software. But typically people work, work around, um, there's a master CAD person and the whole thing is locked until that person is finished with a file. So here we're not doing that, we're saying we're working on multiple files at the same time and then we combine them, anyone can combine them into the final final thing. So the other advantages I mentioned, the, the design file is not locked. People can upload new files as they like on any part of the project. So this is accessible to anyone without using advanced and expensive product lifecycle management tool chains. So in the industry this is called PLM product lifecycle management where you're you're managing how you store the files, who works on them, um, all the data around them. So this is a simplified PLM, the open source PLM version of a process that allows itself to be done by more people than, than in an industry. Now what are the disadvantages? The disadvantages fall out of what I discussed already which is that people are not used to this. Typically people are familiar with a process where a single person does most of the work uh, so this, what we're doing here, requires a collaborative mindset in which each person pays attention to making files accessible to others to build upon. So it's a different, simply different kind of way of doing things. We're involving a large number of people. A lot of people who might have issues with trying to say, oh, I want to control how this goes. Well, no, not really. We're getting feedback from and input from a lot of people. This is a more of a wild distributed process which allows for forks, it allows for variations, it allows for large collaborative development, and that's why we do it. So uh, when we do the Pi tablet or any other large, larger scale project, like with a cordless drill in the future, uh, people can work on the individual parts and then simply use the merge after. But the main thing to remember here, before you work with merge, check your file that the thing you have is either like a dumb object or a simple object that appears as one item in a tree view so that the final document becomes transparent as opposed to like inundated with a whole version history of each of the parts. Don't need that. Now we're working at the final assembly. Leave all that in the individual part version histories. So before you go into the merge workflow, simplify, use the simple file, uh, allowing you to use less memory and make, it for, make for an efficient process. Any questions? This is crystal clear. Okay, everybody, so let's, let's try this and see how it works. <clears throat> 